Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we are on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is an excer ex excerpt from the podcast. If you want to go check out everything as we please do, because we're cool over there. But um, y'all know who we are: me, Vicky, and Cam. You know what I'm saying? Um, and we usually do this, you know, at the beginning of the year. It's middle of the year. It's fine. Uh, we're just gonna talk about 2022 and what happened, and all of our little life changes and adjustments and things and just give y'all the year nine we've been married for a full nine years we are currently in our 10th year okay when you are going into a new year you're in that year it's not completed yet but we're in there so can you believe Ooh, almost 10 years crazy this is the ninth video we've done like this so this is wild um so yeah let's do it marriage QA. describe year nine in one word 2022 what's it called Cause you're really smart. I'm not that smart. What's it called when you make, when there's a sound that you use instead of a word? A what? Isn't a sound, it's, it's a like sound a, word. It's, it's like, like a, a grammatical term. It's like a word that sounds like what it, what the word is. No, or? cause like for me, I was going to be like, mm. Oh, that's how I would describe. <laughs> mm. That's not a word though. So you can't really say that, I, but it's, it's a like onomatopoeia. I think, I think that's it. It's not onomatopoeia. Onomatopoeia is when you, it's a word that sounds like what you said. Like boom. Boom is, is it? No, no, it's not. No, it's not. No, it's not. Yeah, onomatopoeia is like sizzle. Yeah, it sounds, the word sounds like what you said. I feel like it's like comic book text. Right? Mm-hmm. Uh, like, like pow. pow. Boom. Yeah. yeah. That's onomatopoeia. You, I guess you could say that's onomatopoeia. Yeah, kind of. Express. It's an expression. That's uh, so that's 2022. Mm. What, please explain. Well, all right, because the way that it started, <laughs> the way, yeah, but that that was 22, right? 22 started off. I turned 30. Yeah, you turned 30 because yeah, you went to Utah. All right, <laughs> all right, <laughs> yeah, you gotta go back, you gotta go back a little bit. It's been all a minute, right, it's so been a minute. January starts off with a bang. Yang. Uh, <laughs> Vicky turned 30, uh, most expensive uh, birthday weekend. We're not even going to talk about ever. how I wanted to fight you when Thanks. I found out. Thanks. But it's okay. Thanks, Wanda. Uh, but anyway, she, yeah. des she deserved every every dollar. Uh, well, back then, back then, we was just living kind of, we was living a little recklessly. Yeah, we was, we was like, hey, let's just turn up. Hey, but for, my live, 30th, learn. for my 30th, I went all out, okay? Because even before that, we did a lot of stuff. But so. did you not have a time, though? Oh, I had a time. Okay. Oh, that, listen, I was, my outfits were mad expensive. My hair was expensive. Like, I was like, I'm doing all the things. I'm going, it's my 30th. You only turned 30 once. So I was right. like, I need to, bruh. So, yeah, Ooh, she turned 30. It, that, <laughs> she turned 30. <laughs> my hair was expensive. So that's bro. June. I mean, that's June. That was, that was January. And then, like, in the midst of that, then we had a brand deal with Travel Wisconsin. We did. And we, uh, we, we. We went skiing. Learned how to ski, even though we had just left. Utah. Utah, trying to we ski. We didn't get to ski. We didn't end up getting to do it. Uh, <laughs> but then we went, we did in Wisconsin, and it was cold. It was the hardest thing I've ever done. It was so hard. get out. No, it wasn't. Birth. But. Cold as all get out. Before that. My toes, I mean, I Every almost part lost of our body. some toes. Right? We were frozen. We did that. Then that was still January. Yes. Then uh, we were preparing for our nine-year anniversary trip. Mm -hmm. No, that was eight-year anniversary trip. Eight years. Eight-year anniversary trip. So we went to Puerto Vallarta. No, it was nine. No, it was eight. No, it was eight. It was eight because this year was nine. Just kidding. Uh -huh. Yeah. Just kidding. Um, we didn't do anything this year. That's pregnant. Which was absolutely incredible. Yes. Absolutely incredible. It was great. Also expensive, but it was great. It was worth the money. Super expensive. So I, glad I we mean, didn't. absolutely incredible. So glad I didn't skip out on that one because we didn't have a trip this year. Absolutely incredible, right? No regrets. Then, obviously, you know, y'all know our testimony. People, they just, they just, they say certain things and they, you know, they don't understand the brevity, not the brevity, they don't understand the, the power of how their words can impact people and so people like man Cam, you about to be you about to be 32 like you know what you want and i'm like all i want 
for my birthday is a child. All right. And this is in March. So then May comes and then Mother's Day. And then did we go see your mom for Mother's Day? I don't remember what happened. But then June comes, my birthday. What did we do for that Mother's Day? I ain't really. No, we went. We went family vacation. Yeah, we did. June. Joint family vacation. That, that year we went to Orlando, right? Mm-hmm. And we all regretted it. <laughs> we hated it. Orlando just, it just sucks. It was trash, bro. We got rained on the whole time. Orlando just sucks. It's not a, it's not a great vacation spot. Um, then. But something was happening. Something was happening. Something. God was. <laughs> I remember something even happening. Even when you don't know that he's working. Because I working. was, I was so sleepy in Orlando already. I was sleepy. So. Yep. It yep. was just, listen, things were things were things were happening. Then July comes. That's June, when I, June. Remember, we went to my dad. We we surprised my dad for Father's we Day. We surprised Vicky's dad for Father's Day. Mm-hmm. Then the Amazon dropping at the beginning of July. We shot Amazon, and y'all, let me tell you, Vicky was looking so. I was beautiful. Good. Oh my gosh! Like I just kept, I just kept looking at her like, bro. First of all. I don't understand, like, where your face and, like, everything was just different. 2022. Dead was giveaway. Uh, <laughs> Dead giveaway. <laughs> she was just looking. She was looking the best she ever looked. And I was like. All of 2022. God, you are so well, gracious, kind, and awesome. Up until the end. And, but then, you know, I decided right after that, I was like, I'm going to go on a fast. I went on a fast. No, but even even in that, she went to my sister's birthday party thing. That whole day, though, Vicky whole, was just, like stuff started like. Did the did we te- did we ever tell the story of that whole like week? Yeah, of all the things that happened that week. Yeah. Okay. And uh, did we? we yeah, did. we did on the podcast. And we went to North, North at the Lebanon. at at the seventh day. I was going fast until however long, but on the seventh day, she told me she was pregnant. Boom! Pregnant. Right? Boom! That's July. Then we went to the museum of ice cream. You, we went to Museum of Ice Cream. Then I don't now like time. It's all a blur. Yeah. Now, <laughs> so then we started doing, you know, the checkups. We went to first look. And then after that, we heard the heartbeat. We, right. We heard the heartbeat. We life, had to hide for two weeks forever. from your parents and my parents. Um, had my parents over the house and we gave them a card. We surprised them. Uh, and that was hilarious. Are you just going to talk about the whole year? just gonna go through the whole thing i'm just going through the because i'm telling you why it was what it was <laughs> and then after that just check up after check up for my son and it's like boom like mm. <laughs> like I, I mean it's 2022 was indescribable there was so many things happening so many that it just and then we went, went back so and we surprised your dad again or no your parents again yeah we surprised him. Your parents we surprised him uh, at the church, and you had your Amazon drop stuff on, and that went viral. That reel went viral, and then a few months later, we came back and surprised him again. Like it was just a year of surprises. It's surprises is for sure because I was not planning on getting surprises. pregnant that year. When I tell you, I was even though we were fashion trying, week. Yes, even though we were trying Bruh. to get pregnant, we weren't trying. We were trying, but we weren't like we were. At the point to where, like, we was like, well, whenever it happens, whatever. Bruh. But we were kind of over the trying thing, you know? And so I was like, well, shoot, if this ain't finna happen, I'm finna, <laughs> I'm finna turn up. So that's why I was like, let's spend all the money for my birthday. Let's put this money down on this house. Like, let's, let's do all these things that, you know, eventually we'll have the kid and we'll be ready. So that's, that's when we, like, sat down. We had the whole conversation. I was like, I want to retire before I have kids. Like... I want to like, let's do all these things now so we can get ready. You know, let's get this bag right. Like, let's figure out what you're going to do with your music and your, your hobbies and your, all your things. Like we was, I was like, my brain was like somewhere else. And that's when it always happens. Caught me off guard. It also caught me off guard because I don't know. I think because I was like, I felt like a different, I think just going into 30, I felt like a different person. Because, okay, so for me, my, my word of the year was, it's not really a word, but I, I kept telling myself that I wanted to do all the scary things. Like I wanted to just be fearless and do everything that scares me. That was my thing for the year. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Um, I didn't get to jump out of a plane like I wanted to, but getting pregnant is pretty much like jumping out of a plane. Um, but also get this. 
check this off okay i hate that saying check this off check this off um it's also it also was the year of building right my dad preset and at the um, beginning of 2022 it was also the, the year, 22 or 21 that was 22 the That's, year of building it was the year of building um he said that 22 is an, is the number of light um it was our eighth year of being married so new beginnings new beginnings um he said it was the year of house and family and building just knew building we was finna get a new house. building people systems and structures we just knew, we, we just, just knew. knew that maybe we was gonna get a house. oh here it is um but we did build a people a person <laughs> building people systems and structures we hired our first employee didn't go the way i wanted it to but it's fine Many she's other still here she's still here shout out to lexus and brought on another one for me <laughs> even though you're not in the play but it's okay one day I'm going to take you off. I'm going to take everybody off their job. I'll be telling everybody this. I was telling my nail tech this. I was like, girl, I want to take you off your job. <laughs> Where can I hire you to do? <laughs> <laughs> in the future, when I have some more money, I got you, girl. Listen, we go, whatever you need, I'm here. Um, I just like people taking people off their jobs. I don't know what that is about me. It's just like the rebel in me. It's like I, I want to, it's like the Hunger Games. Like I want to pull y'all out of the, the system and. The 75th quarter quarter <laughs> of the Hunger Games. Um, but anywho, anywho, anywho. Yeah, that's my word. My word is, was fearless or something like that um i have a fearless bracelet fearless um but so yeah everything do everything so uh there were some scary things that we did in 2022 aside from me getting pregnant um one i almost died um we went snowmobiling that was very scary for me i didn't want to do it low-key wanda was literally pressuring us to do it she was like guys i bought these tickets we gotta go we gotta go she was doing ivf so she was we drove through um but a blizzard we went in a blizzard snowmobile no exaggeration a legit blizzard it was i wiped out how many times twice, twice. um i almost went off a cliff one she almost went off the cliff that's when we um 30 seconds in the devil was trying to kill me <laughs> 30 seconds in 30 seconds don't in. blame the devil <laughs> No, in my defense, they didn't give us any training. Don't blame the devil. They didn't give us any tra no practice run, nothing. They were like, this is how you turn it on. This is how you steer. This is how you go. This is how you stop. Boom. That was it. Instructions were pretty clear for the rest the of us. The snowmobile is literally as long <laughs> as this couch. And I'm on it by myself. There's a whole section it's for heavy. another you person. You got to turn with your body. She was I'm still, little. She, she was, yeah, she, you know. I could not move that thing. Anyways, almost died there. Then um, we stayed in Jungle Treehouse. It wasn't really scary. But it could have been the Huatis. We was in the we, yeah. We were in a jungle with all the animals and stuff. Yeah, if you left your if you left your screen door open, yeah, they would have been in there in the bed with you. Going, Come on in, combing your hair uh, <laughs> with the little people hands. He climbed up on our table. Remember that he had his little hand on the table like what y'all eat outside. He was outside. Yeah, they, um, spiders. But that was fun. Too. That was fun. Um, and then like we did a lot of things that were kind of scary, you know. Um, but overall seven out of ten uh <laughs> okay so goals we accomplished for gear nine goals we accomplished. so here's the thing i had a whole list of goals hee <laughs> i had like 50 60 goals on this thing uh i accomplished four um that last year i was really frustrated because of oh. how little goals i accomplished I like think i made any goals i was so mad because like nothing went the way i thought it was gonna go even with us getting pregnant it was like chaos oh no i did i had one goal i had one I, it was to uh do the friday morning devo every week and i did it you did for a season you did yeah um i had a lot of things i wanted to do like i wanted to learn how to swim i, I wanted to learn how to skydive it was a lot of things i wanted to do but i didn't get to do them um because i got pregnant but the only the only goals that i made was um hiring a team member for the first time did that did that i worked out i was working out for like a good four months you know what i'm saying my body was <laughs> r.i.p r.i.p to my quads my knees i am so weak right now i need to get in the, every day i wake up and i'm like i'm beat up i need to get back in the gym that's one thing i will say i need to work on my gym motivation i have no gym motivation um most people don't have gym motivation yeah but like i don't even i don't have like willpower either like i'll get in there and i'll be like okay i don't want to do this no more and i'll leave 
So I have to be there with Cam because otherwise I will not do it. He's the only person I listen to too because nobody else, I don't really care what y'all think. She barely do that. I barely listen to you, but I listen to you a little bit. I'd be like, all right, I'll be in there trying to like really work and she want to dance and stuff. Like, <laughs> I do. Um, I wanted to, I put this on my list and I don't know why because usually I don't make goals like this, but I said I wanted to do the Amazon drop and I did that twice. I did two drops. Two times. One of them sold out. Okay. The second one it did, it did all right. It did it did good. I hit a bonus tier, so hey, boom. Um and then I wanted to launch a product. So Amazon Drop counts as the product and collab with a brand and that the Amazon Drop. So those are my those are my goals that I reached. Not many goals. Also, I had a goal to put money down on the lot so that we could start building. We did it. We had the money and put it down just didn't end the way we thought but many are the plans that's just our what what i call, want to call like our abraham story gotta be like many are the plans i'm gonna bless you thought. to do this but then but in the you end, gotta give it back to me the scripture really should say many are the plans in a man's heart but in the end god gets the last laugh <laughs> literally because <laughs> like, the whole house situation like, and i was talking about this you can make all the plans you want and god's sitting there like oh Okay. And he'd be like, okay, like, okay, like, <laughs> wow. I'm a, I want you to do this in faith. I want you to do, because I never thought for one second we heard God wrong. I, I still don't think we did. He'd be like, I want you to do this in faith. So we do it. Boom. Awesome. Now give it back to me. Um, what? He'll be like, actually, never mind. We'll pick this up later. But you got to drop it right now. I got something else for you to do. Needless to say, I didn't reach my goals, but it's fine. It's fine. This year only had one and it was to have the baby. So, yay. Bada bing, bada boom. We did it. What were the hardest moments? Well, we kind of talked about those already. No, we didn't. What was the hardest moments? Some of them. Well, that was, yeah, that was um, kind of last year. All right. Hardest moment for me is watching my mom, watching my mom, watching my wife have a C-section. No, that was this year. We're talking about 2022. Oh, 2022, <laughs> bruh. That's what I'm saying. Like, like the last. It's like mm, the last. We don't know. The last year and eight months. Mm. Yeah, it's I all. It's everything's like blurring together. Last well, year, well, Dad was the started thing? getting sick last year. Yeah, that was hard. That was hard. That was hard. Yeah, that was hard. Dad was going through it. Cause in the year before that, he had. We telling all his business. He ain't gonna know. He ain't gonna listen to this. The year before that was <laughs> twenty one was COVID, right? Yeah. And I had to preach all that month. Mm-hmm. And then he got better, but he still had some like lingering things. And then his health I now his birthday's in October. So October yeah. twenty one, devil almost tried to kill him. That, these are his words. <laughs> October twenty two. He was walking through the valley and shut up with that. Devil almost trying to kill him again. This time it was serious. No, it was. This time it was It was pretty scary. And it was scary because I was pregnant too. So it was like, dang, we right. thought, we thought we, you know, he might not be able to see his grandson. Yeah. So. So that was scary. Um, yeah, that was hard. That was really hard. Mm, there was a lot of things going on last year that were, that was hard. Um, I can't really remember all of them off the top of my head, but I think that's probably one of the hardest moments for sure. Then uh, feeling like. Feeling like we weren't going to have enough space. Oh, yeah. For- well, the whole house thing was really hard, too, because it was like I had this vision of what I wanted our family to start off with. Yeah. Like I wanted Xander to be better off than this. <laughs> um, and this isn't this, this and isn't that's the thing. terrible. Like, this isn't it's bad. Not, but it's just you always have. I know for me. Well, right? we prepared for it, though. That's the thing. We had mentally been preparing to move. Yeah. Everybody knows this, which is why they keep asking me, what, when are we moving? And I'm like, yeah. we're not. Um, but we had mentally prepared to do it. So, And we had decluttered the whole house, remember? We renovated yep. all downstairs. We was better to get yep. out of here. Yep. So. And then yeah. life said, boom. It said, nope. Boom. You thought. You thought. So, yeah, that was hard. Um, favorite trip slash vacay of the year. Of last year? Mm-hmm. We had so many. Favorite. We went on a lot of trips last year. Despite me being pregnant, we still was going places. I don't know about favorite, but this one is the one that stands out to me the most and I feel like means the most to me. 
um, when we went to Ohio. That was, there are a lot of moments last year where, not that I knew I was going to get pregnant, but they felt pivotal. Yeah, Ohio was. Ohio was. Pivotal Ohio for was me. like soul care. Yes, it was pivotal for me um, because that was the first time I feel like that was the first time where people actually like talked about me getting pregnant and becoming a mom, and there was like a time on it. That was the first time anybody had ever told me at an exact time that it was going to happen, and it was the same week that Xander was born that we were in Ohio, and they said that. Yeah, and he said this time next year you'll have. Yeah, you have a baby, and I normally I don't believe that kind of stuff because I'd be like, everybody just be saying stuff, you know. But that time I kind of believed it. I was like, actually, you know what? That sounds like it'll be right. It was right. It's the first time that's ever happened. Also, that's the first time I talk uh, talked about it, like talked about our struggles to conceive, in a way that I didn't feel bad for myself, like I didn't feel sorry for me. Normally, prior to that, I was like feeling sorry for myself and feeling sorry for us. But that was the first time I really felt like, eh, I'm cool with it. Like, I'm at peace. I had so much peace on that trip. And the air smelled good. Like, oh, it was just, everything was, like, really, like, full circle. Yeah. I love stuff. Like, I was doing a lot of earthing and grounding back then, too. I need to start doing that again. I miss that. Um, so that was my favorite trip of the year. Uh, another favorite trip for me was Vegas. We went to Vegas last year, too. That also felt like a pivotal Oh, yeah, because I did Soul Cup. Mm -hmm. We went to Vegas. We stayed there for a whole week with Muff. Yep. Um, that was also a pivotal moment for me. I felt different on that trip, too. I don't know why, but I just I felt like something's shifting. I felt different. Yeah, because you wasn't pregnant. I wasn't, but I felt different, though. I don't know why it feels like you would have been, but you weren't. I wasn't. But that was after we went to Atlanta, though. And I start taking the new supplements she had gave me and doing the de the body detox or whatever. I did like a little detox or something. Um, and it made me feel different anyway. So I was already kind of feeling like. Different. That's crazy. My body was doing something. I, for, I totally forgot we went to Atlanta. I, like mm -hmm. I we went to remember because we went to Atlanta the week that I announced that the Amazon drop was coming. And then we went to Vegas. I did the drop. I did a call about the Amazon drop and showed them like all of my designs and stuff. But then, oh, I loved Mandarina. Yeah, so I, I was going to say, like, favorite trip just off the rip, one and only. That was incredible. We did that little video on the... <laughs> Ew. That one and only was incredible. Yuck. Baby Moon was incredible. For you. I had I had a good time on the Baby Moon, but let's be real. I really wish I wasn't pregnant on that trip. <laughs> I could not enjoy myself fully. Like you said, Ohio was soul care. I, I don't think I've ever had a trip like that no never because i needed that too because mm -hmm. I, I mean like i deal with a lot of pressure right it was like just nice to be around ministry pressure to be around people that, that i don't even think any of you have any idea mm -hmm. maybe like two of you maybe and that's just me guessing but yeah so that was that was just really that was huge to be around of all places ohio too it was like uh but it was such a nice little i cabin. say this all the time about this it's like you guys know X Men and how they all went to uh, the the uh, yeah the the school the school, mm -hmm, the school for misfit they're all orphans, mutants whatever and it's like that was the first time where I was I felt like I was in the right place with people who understand understood me shepherds and uh, yeah, I love my little shepherd and I let you and I was able to vent and talk about you know all my stuff because I don't shepherd problems I don't open up a lot. No, he doesn't. And so to be around other people who are going through the same thing, it's like, man, you're not alone, my dude. Yeah. And so that was great talking to other PKs. And we have, it's like, you think, I'm going to say this too. Just because you're a different race, you think that your struggles are different. They're not. They're, they're I mean, they're eerily similar. They are similar. And that's not to take Y'all just from talk that. differently. Yeah. It's just different ways of communication, but, but the pain, the confusion, the chaos, it's, it's all like the root of all of that. It's the, it's the, it's same. the same in no matter, no matter what culture you're in, it's the same. Yeah, so that's true. That, that trip was just, it was good. It was soul care and it was, it was awesome. So shout out to everybody that was there. Everybody. We're that still was in there. the group chat to this day. Everybody that was there. I love all y'all. 
Favorite date night. Now, was this last year? Sushi by Boo? 2022. The first time, our first time going, yes. Okay. I don't know why. The one where we thought we, that that's the night we got pregnant. Correct. Oh, yeah. See, there it is. There it is. Yeah, I'm pretty that sure favorite. that's the night. I'm pretty sure that's, that's my, the night. That was my favorite. I traced it back. I calculated, and that's the that has to be the. That I want was it to my be the favorite. Night. I want it to be the night because if that's not the night, the yes. night. If that's not the night, the other night would be oh, in Orlando, oh, no. and I don't want to have conceived in Orlando. Oh, at all. That's I no. That's not the memory I want to have. Thank the memory Jesus. I want to have is sushi. We <laughs> went to sushi by Bo. My God. We had omakase, which is a twelve course tasting. That's, that's the best, y'all. And I've never had ever. like nigiri or shishim sashimi mm -hmm. i normally just just would eat regular sushi rolls but this was like <laughs> another level and every single roll was buzzing it's like self chef's choice fire. chef's choice it was very it was good fire. um so we that went was, there it was just a great it was just a great that day. was a good date that was a good day i think that's probably it's my favorite day as well and i'm pretty day. sure it's because i think we got pregnant on that day it was a great night i think so it was yeah. a good night um okay most memorable moment of the year most memorable most memorable most memorable yes when you think about 2022 like the first memory that pops up Ooh, 2022 i'm gonna say I feel like i know what yours is but go ahead yeah when you told me yes that's when when you told me you were pregnant because it was it was hilarious because i was like I'm over here fasting, trying to, you know, like, all right, God, like, what you going to do? Like, you got to move, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, yeah, I need something to shake. And then get literally. Your, get on your Zoom. Kid you not, the seventh day. I hate that saying. The Why seventh say day. All of that stuff happens. It was just, that was incredible. And then to tie into it is when we told our parents. No, that's definitely my most memorable moment. Because your mom, like, my mom had a 24 minute delay and then she, she started definitely had dancing. a delayed reaction and then i gave my dad the card and he was like what <laughs> why y'all do me like this y'all recording me it was that was funny and then your mom screaming and then shocking your dad and then your dad was like what and then he reads the card and, and then he, he throws, throws it. it up in the air it was just hilarious jonathan started crying it was just the whole thing yeah that, our family is a hoot okay? they are they are a hoot um no that's definitely I think the most memorable moment for me, probably that day in general, the day that I found out is just a whole chaotic mess. First of all, we were up all morning because we had went to LaShawn's house and y'all was recording until 3 a.m. We drove back home and then I took it. I took I took a test before we left because I was eating pickles and with tahini on them in the car. And then we got back. I took a test that morning and then I didn't believe it. Uh, Cause I was like, this oh, looks fake. Like it? I can't tell what this is. So I called Lex. Lex was on the phone with me. It's her birthday party day. She, we on the phone. She's trying to tell me how to read the freaking test. And I'm like, okay, well, let me go ahead and just get the digital ones. It was just a whole thing. Then we had to go out to eat that night, and then I had to pretend like nothing was happening. Then I had to quickly figure out how to tell you because I couldn't hold water. It was just, it was a mess. That whole day was so chaotic. It was a very memorable uh, day. I remember what everything smelled like. It would smell like. I wanted to puke, so there's that. But it felt sick that whole day. Just sick. That was a good day, though. That day and then the day that we announced during Fashion Week. That was a good day, too. Yeah, Fashion Week Fashion Week period was that was really great. dope. That was great. Um, pivotal moment for me because I've been wanting to go to Fashion Week my whole life. So that felt like full circle. Oh, well, we kind of just said what the funniest moment was, didn't we? Is that the funniest moment of the year? Which one? Telling our parents that we were pregnant? Yeah. Because I, I still go back. I can't think of anything funny. I still go back and watch my mom, her little dance. <laughs> and she was like, she was like, I just want to see a, a pregnancy test. I, I, right. I'm like, you, that was hilarious. how you ruin your own surprise? Like, I, we didn't even say anything. How you ruin your own surprise? That was funny. That was definitely funny. Surprises and your are mom always screaming funny. at the top of her lungs yeah. for two minutes. Yes. Because my mom never reacts like that to anything. So for her to scream. Nah, that was hilarious. was wild. I've that never seen her so excited in my life. That was funny. Um, 
Yeah, I think that's the funniest thing. I can't think of anything else that was really funny. Did you reflect on the year? You didn't. This year or last year? Last year. year. <laughs> yeah, I keep telling you. I, I needed that's... you to reflect so that you can answer the questions properly because we're not even going to be able to answer them now. Did you reflect? I don't have to reflect. I look at pictures all the time, so I know where I was at a year ago. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't got to worry about me. Okay. Well, lead us off then. Okay. Uh, what is the biggest lesson we learned in 2022? Lead us off. <laughs> I can't say what the biggest lesson is for you. What was the biggest lesson? The biggest lesson for me. You learned last the year. The biggest lesson for me was I feel like I learned this lesson probably every year of my adult life. Oh no, no, yeah, I, I got it. My yeah. biggest lesson was you can be as prepared as you think you are for something and you still are not. For me, I was really frustrated. I was really frustrated because I thought that what happened, the way that it happened with me getting pregnant, I didn't think that was going to happen when it happened. Like I, in my brain, I had already decided there was a certain way I wanted this to go because based on the fact that we had to wait so long and based on like how our trajectory was going with our business and stuff and like the new house thing, like how we were going to like do that. And like, I just felt like everything was going to line up perfectly and that was going to be God's perfect timing. And I was wrong. And it threw me off. Mm. <laughs> so I learned that. And then all the, and like me goal setting. I never, when I tell y'all I don't goal set, like I'm not a goal setting type person. I'm a go with the flow kind of person anyway. So the first time that I ever tried to set goals and like reach those goals and none of them happened, I was so mad. I'm like, I'm never doing this again. I'm never setting goals again. Are you kidding? Mm. This is a joke. So to me, it was like teaching me like, okay, you can, you can like have all of your plans but I mean, you are the plans. It's like, you can think you're doing everything right. Again, we've talked about this before. Like you can think you're doing everything right. And that still doesn't mean everything is going to go the way you want it to. God's timing is still God's timing. His plan is still his plan. And it don't look like yours. So get over it. As soon as you started talking, I already immediately, it came to me because there was a very pivotal moment in last year that I've done. And I've done it before, but like this time I had a different, level of expectation and desperation how many have ever been here where i feel like preaching you're such a preacher I'm like <laughs> <laughs> because how many of you i'm trying to like i'm really thing. trying to put this into words contextualize my thoughts yeah i was just doing that too it was but, hard for me i don't know why but last year was such a pivotal year it really was and the biggest lesson i learned is it's multi. It's many lessons. They were all pivotal. They were all big lessons. One is, you can have a plan, like we said last week. You can have a plan, but everybody got plans until you get punched in the mouth. Yeah. The other lesson is, even when you don't see God moving, He's still moving. He's moving. Yep. Even when you don't think He's working, He's working. When I decided that I wasn't going to just fast with the church every time we the church does a fast, that I was going to fast on my own. And I began to fast on my own because it was something that I was desiring from the Lord. And I knew only God could do uh, this miracle. <laughs> and as I was fasting. It was funny because it already, it already happened. So she was what, already pregnant. She was what, weeks That's what was really pregnant. funny about that. You, and God was like, bro, you over here stressed out, tripping. I, I had already did it. But losing okay. hair, hair thinning out. You ain't sleeping. You're anxious. Even though I'm telling you to be anxious for nothing. You ain't casting your cares. Stress is just all out of whack. Got to give you some extra supplements to take because you don't know how to calm down. I'm all, I got this. Right. God was literally telling me, son, I got this. Clapping just like that. That's, that's, how, that's how me and God's relationship is. <laughs> and I'm like, man, God, thank you. And I'm, I've been blown away ever since. What is something new that you learned about me? I don't know. Last year. I don't know if this is like new or if this is just like we changed. There's something, there is a paradigm shift that happens. I don't even know if I used that phrase right. I just wanted to say it. I hope I used it right. Hmm. Uh, <laughs> there is a paradigm shift. There's a shift that happens 
uh, when a uh, couple becomes pregnant, okay, um, you had your dad energy kicked in like immediately. You definitely like changed. You were like more like no nonsense all of a sudden. Like your whole dynamic, like not dynamic, your whole like demeanor changed. You was like, man, I'm a dad. I don't, I don't need this. <laughs> That's how you was acting. Like you, like you wouldn't like, I don't know. I can't think of like an actual instance when this happened. I was just cracking up because you were more mean. It's like you kind of turned into me for a second. And I was like, oh, I like this. Like you just wasn't, t you wasn't having it. Like, I don't remember when. It's just, it, it was happening. And I was like, wow, Cam is different. He's new. No, I... I totally agree. I'm still like that, though. Yes, you're like, you were more mean, like, and I was like, he's more of like, he's more like assertive, like he's more, and you were saying, you were the way you were talking to people, it just, you had more of like a matter of fact, it's like something you've, it's kind of, you kind of always been that way, but you were more like, I don't know, before, before me getting pregnant, you were more like chill, like you were like, oh, I'm not gonna ruffle feathers, I'm not gonna, but then like all of a sudden you was just, <laughs> you would just say it whatever oh it's because instagram had just dropped that new uh feature where like you can put like a little status thing and then um you was like i'm gonna choose violence and you just start saying a bunch of polarizing stuff <laughs> you would just say whatever like i'm like can you stop trying to start arguments what are you doing but it was funny to me i just People, thought it was funny oh can <laughs> when saying nothing to and me. you was posting stuff on facebook so i don't follow you on facebook because i don't be on facebook but i'll still be I heard doing you, that you were saying that you were posting just random stuff on facebook to make people mad i did it the other day <laughs> he was like oh my god i, I don't like know. this cam i know but i don't know it's One just something that, friends like oh i like i like this kind of carry on but even before even before we got pregnant maybe i shouldn't say this you you're just i don't know you just you've been you was acting different yeah that's more bedroom related so i can't say that oh but, <laughs> my but it translated in all aspects there's unmarried people in here so i'm gonna just keep it pg for now you know but i said this i said i felt a shift my dad felt a shift in me many people felt a shift like when i turned 30 yeah things it's really just, when you turn 30 things there we just go. started shifting for me and like each year it's really when you turn 30. there's another pr level of progression like mm -hmm. when i first when i turned 30 that was the most confident i had ever been in myself i had been at that particular time i had been an ordained pastor for five years at the time you had been at your job for um, 10 years i had been in my job for 10, 10 years. years you know and like like last year I, I felt the shift, but especially once we found out she was pregnant, I'm like, listen, because I've seen it. Like, you know, y'all not about to talk to my wife crazy. Y'all not about to do anything to make her feel any kind of way or uncomfortable. Y'all not about to make her stress levels go up. Y'all not about to make my son's blood levels or, or vitals or any, like he was you, in there if chilling. You do he any, was both chilling if you do anything to, to hurt my family, I felt like Liam Neeson. <laughs> I have a unique my set of skills. <laughs> and I'm not afraid to use them. It's my family we talking about. This is my this is my family. Okay? You talking about family. You talk, I feel like I feel like what's the name? Dom. You're talking about my wife. No, I thought you were talking about Dom. It's my wife. It's on a Fast and Furious. No. Family. No. <laughs> what's something um, new you learned about me? I feel like that don't count either because I was pregnant. So I was just a totally different person in general. But once once we started on our holistic health journey. I don't know if I said this before. I think I was telling you, though, but it was like when we first got married, <laughs> you know, you had those those. It's kind of locker room talk, but it's kind of not because it's nothing like crazy. But guys, we talk about our wives. We talk about our girlfriends, whatever. Like, yeah, man, man my, my girl, she was doing X, Y, Z. And, you know, guys at work were telling me about their wife. And like, <laughs> in back of my head, I was like, my wife don't do that. <laughs> OK, but now she she's no okay she's, so she's in the she's in the majority she's in the mm. she's in the number i'm delu i'm delulu <laughs> am i delulu <laughs> she's in the number <laughs> um no but you know why that happened though it literally like last year was like the the peak of it i feel like especially like the earlier in the year right before i got pregnant i was like totally like 
I was so I should have known I was going to get pregnant that year. I should have known this because like my f- feminineness was very feminine. I don't even know how else to describe that. It's like hormonally. I was like really feminine. I was in my feminine energy. <laughs> and when Cam met me, I was in a very masculine energy. Okay. I was, I was one of the homies. I was one of the, that's probably how we fell in love. Like I was just your homie. Like we was, we was, we was cool. Like we was, I was one of the guys. <laughs> I didn't have like, I wasn't emotional. Like I wasn't like irrational. Like I ain't really like, I didn't care about it. I was just like, man, please like, whatever but then like as soon as i start getting my body together then the emotions start coming up mm, but it's like but it's it wasn't a bad thing though like i think i i just i became more like i don't know expressive and i don't know it's just weird i just i could i definitely could tell that i was a little different but is that that's that's just what you learned new about me yeah it was like okay a lot of the things that I didn't think you were like you became example. <laughs> you want you sure you want it? Yeah, this was last year, right? And currently. No, no, we're not talking about currently. We're talking about last year. Last okay. year, last what did you learn about start. me last year? Something new you learned about me last year. You're thinking about now. Something new you learned about me last year that I could get pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Well, her uterus works, guys. <laughs> he was worried. <laughs> you yeah. don't know. Last year is hard though. Okay, well, we'll because see. because for 90% of the year. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't 90. I was only pregnant for half the year. Last year was so polarizing for you because. Yeah, it was. I was two different people. But yeah, you like the beginning of the year, you was in your bag, you know, with the fashion and the style and all that. Like we talked about it from January all the way. Okay, up so what did you June. learn about me new then? You didn't learn nothing new then? No. <laughs> no. I didn't change when I turned 30. I feel like I changed. I just feel like I was different. Not really. I was the same. No. I definitely changed when I was pregnant. You definitely changed when you was pregnant. I feel like I was kind of the same, just a little more mean. But I didn't really, I didn't learn anything new. Okay. I, I mean, I had a deeper realization that you really are like, you love experiences and you like trying different things. And, and you know, because you were just really excited about the snowmobile and, and the skiing. And like, yeah, when see, we did the travel Wisconsin thing, like there was nobody there. But like you were just having the time of your life. I and, was. I had so much fun ice skating with you. There was nobody else yeah, out there. She had just a blast. And you were just so excited. I was. I, was like, I oh, think you really learned really... that. I'm actually like, I actually am like introverted. Like I don't have to be around a lot of people to have fun. No. Like Cam, if nobody's there, Cam is like, this is boring. <laughs> I'm like, it's us though. It's us having No, I didn't mind, but it was just like He's like, What what do we do? You were just so you just <laughs> like a little kid. Just I was. So I love excited. I love skating. So I've been trying to get you to ice skate with me forever. That was fun. You We tried to go. We tried to go downtown. Remember we that? did. It was too many people. Seventy trillion people. There was we were in that line for literally forever, like an hour and a half, and we never even got to skate because we was too cold. It was, a waste. It was freezing. Man. Well, anyways, it was a I'm glad you like. I'm glad you realized that I like to have fun. It was a <laughs> I just, I just, I have more fun when nobody else is there. That's the thing, because I'm, the, I'm one of them kind of people. Like, you don't know if I'm having, if I'm enjoying myself or not. Like, you can't tell if I'm having fun. But it's really just because, like, I, I have more fun when I'm, when it's just me, or like if it's just us. I just be, I, I don't have to be around a lot of people. A lot of people distract me. I can't. I can't. Okay. Uh, in what in what ways did we grow? Ugh, I grew physically. <laughs> my nose grew, and my feet. We were just. I feel like we were. I don't know. Maybe for me, I feel like in faith we grew a lot. We definitely grew in faith because, as you recall, last year we made a lot of big faith moves. I mean, aside from the adventurous things that we did, like seriously. We made some faith moves. We 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 hired an employee. That was a lot to take on. Okay. We hired a whole employee. That's faith move number one. Number two, we uh, put money down on that house in faith that we were going to build it. And then and then we we were still trying to do the the pregnancy thing. So we both did the blood testing and stuff. And like we went to, you know. Yeah. 
and then we well i, I mean i guess i can talk about this because i did post about it I, we i switched uh uh agencies right after finding out that i was pregnant that's that's kind of risky yeah and then going to fashion week to meet all of them that was my first time doing that and we did that last minute like we just was like let's go and then you were like oh you should announce your pregnancy at fashion week and i was like oh i should and then i did that and then i don't know it seemed like we did a lot of stuff last year we were like just doing stuff i don't know have we always been like that i feel like we always been yeah like that. did we grow though did that make us grow i feel like it did well i i was gonna say that i feel like we had to depend on each other yes i feel like more than we ever had yes because in the beginning of our marriage like i was at work 90 percent of the day yeah if then if you include commute work out and then come home like mm -hmm. plus i was traveling a lot you would come on my trips but then still like i was gone a lot and you know for these last two years i've been with you a lot but then when the pregnancy happened we had to depend on each other a lot right true I had to be that drove you to all your i went to all the appointments yeah you did I was there every time every step of the way you needed me for a lot as you got bigger. Yeah. You had to take over a lot of stuff business wise too. Like you had to start doing all the tax stuff for me and all that. Taxes, get on the calls with, with the, with the team. And mm -hmm. and we had a lot of, we had to have meetings, all three of us, me and Lex, we had to have meetings and stuff and configure things and yeah. Assist building systems and trying to get, get the stuff together. So, yep. Shout out to us. Shout out to all the pair. So what was something that made you love me more? Just to see you so excited about being a father. It's what we all wanted. Remember, I kept saying, I kept saying, I'm so happy for you. <laughs> but it, it made it seem like I wasn't happy for me. Yeah, she, she, but, Vicky has a way of saying things with the right intent, I mean, but she says I'm so wrong. I mean, she does it all the time. If we're being honest. She does it all the time. Guys. If we're being honest, I was more happy for you than I was for me because I knew what my body was about to go through. That's really what I was thinking about. Yeah, I was very happy for you because I, I knew, like I wasn't, but I've said this before, I never really had baby fever like that. You know what I mean? Like Cam is a baby person. He loves babies. He's like had dad energy since I met him. He's such a dad, you know? Like he just gives strong dad vibes and he really loves kids. Something that made you love me more, me getting pregnant. Other than me getting pregnant, something else. Because we all know you love me more as a pregnant woman. First of all, I was really cute pregnant for like the first half. It, it was. <laughs> that first half, I was real cute. When we shot. Drop. One. Mm -hmm. Or no. Two. One. Two, I was pregnant. Two well, years actually, pregnant. I was pregnant for both. But you, two, I was. Two visibly. years pregnant. But I. Yeah, one you were pregnant, but I didn't know. Yes, you were so fine. <laughs> that, but not you made me. That but made me no because we had started having deeper conversations with each other. Yeah, remember we we went. I remember that one dinner we had at Sheku, mm -hmm. and we was talking about you know it's unmarried folks in the room, but we you know <laughs> we were we were being open, <laughs> vulnerable. We were being transparent. You gotta, you gotta have those transparent conversations. You, you gotta with your no, y'all need to know this because one day you know. One day, when you get married, you need to know these people. No, actually, we're going to do a whole episode about this. So gird your loins. We're going to do a whole episode about this because somebody asked me a question. She's not married. She has a fiance and she asked me a question and I'm going to I'm going to talk about it because unmarried people, they'd be scared to like talk about sex or think about sex like they'd be real scared. Well, people who like want to do right. OK, um, and it but it's important that you are able to have these candid conversations with each other as like a couple because you're going to need those skills, communication skills. You're going to need those. Like it's important. It's a part of how you build intimacy with each other. Like you need to know like where you're at. Like you can't just go your whole life doing something and never ask like, am I actually making you happy? You know what I mean? Like, and that's not just a sex thing. That's just in general. Like, our relation is our relationship okay like are we actually like doing the things that make each other happy 
because that's what we're here for, you know? So that's what those conversations were about. It was more so about the sex, but, but in general, you need to do that anyway. But anyways, go ahead. <laughs> no, you, you got to have the open, honest, vulnerable, transparent conversations. Because mm-hmm. you, know you know what I found out? Like, you could even be with someone for so long and be... Complacent? Be No, not complacent, but be scared oh, yeah. to bring up certain things. Right. Because you don't want to offend or you don't want to hurt or you right. don't want to make it seem like, no, I'm not saying... No, I'm not saying... I'm, cause, because communication is a two-way street. Mm-hmm. A lot of times what I see, and that's so funny because I'm having like low-key deja vu from looking at the counseling packet <laughs> and i was reading some of the questions on there mm-hmm. and i was like they was lying on it i'm just, was, I'm just thinking about this they was like lying. Couple don't if y'all do, lying. if y'all do premarital counseling lying. don't lie they were lying do not lie in premarital counseling don't Please lie be because it's just gonna affect you in the long haul and the counseling is there to help you it's supposed to help you like you gotta tell the truth and and i think i think a lot of us we get scared about being honest and mm-hmm. being real in those types of moments because you don't you don't want this to fail but if you if you get married and it fails five years later it failed anyway it failed i would i'd rather save my heart from breaking Mm -hmm. in the beginning before we get too deep and too many strings attached yeah then we all right we went through the ceremony all these people were here all these people were witnesses uh we spent all this money and then five years later you can't even stand dude. He can't even like you can't even stand her. Or you have a baby with them and it brings out the real them and then yeah. you really up a creek with no paddle. So what I'm what I'm saying is don't be a <laughs> Why are you laughing a, at myself? That was an old <laughs> shed and sharp country. <laughs> <laughs> I knew y'all were gonna like that one. I knew y'all were gonna like that one. Oh my god. I knew goodness. y'all was gonna like that one. Yeah. <laughs> Y'all forget I'm country too now. Don't let this Chicago accent that I accumulated fool you. Girl, please. People say I sound like a Chicagoan now. They don't They don't know Chicago. Anyway, <laughs> like I was saying, you don't want to seem like you're offending because communication is two-way street. And a lot of times what I've seen, what I've seen, this is a, this is a generalization. I'm not saying everybody's like this. What I've seen is the, the man communicates a certain way and then the, the, the woman offended. takes it a certain way Mm -hmm. he didn't say that but that's how you took it Mm -hmm. you're like what that's how he meant it no Mm -hmm. that's not how he meant it that's just how you took it and a lot of times we can allow our feelings to get in and it can be vice versa Mm -hmm. let's be clear it could be it could be the other way around so you have to not be afraid to have those real conversations because one thing that i appreciate about my wife is no matter uh any any chance that she gets we're having our dinners or our date nights she said, hey, I haven't checked in with you this week. Like, talk to me. And that's great for me. You know, I don't always want to do it. He doesn't. He <laughs> I don't fights always me. Do it, but, he fights me. You know, it's good. It's good for you. So, yeah, just like asparagus and Brussels sprouts, they, they ain't always good. But if somebody cook them right, <laughs> you going to eat them. No, but that's so, good yeah. to, and we'll, again, we'll expound on this more because we're going to, I feel like we should do a whole episode on this and talk about this um, because there's more to it. Obviously, in like our Christian culture, it's very taboo to talk about sex or it has been at least. And it makes people uncomfortable because we've been told that it in the wrong context, it, in the wrong context, it's wrong. But then like because it's been so harped on in that context, it's like. Now people just see it as wrong in general. And so then they ask like really personal questions like, oh, can we do this? Can we do this? And it's like, that's your bed. That's your house. Why are you asking me? But then when I think about it, I'm like, people have been told that so many things are wrong that they don't even know how to have sex with their husband because they haven't been taught that any of it is good. So when you have to communicate about those things, it feels weird. It feels like I shouldn't be talking about this, but you're married so you can but you have to get at that mindset of like oh i can't say anything so like as time has gone on we become more expressive yeah and we don't feel like a hindrance oh i can't say certain stuff because we don't want to like offend because we both grew up in a in like an upbringing where certain things were like offensive to say so you can't but we married so 
You got to be honest. Got to be honest. How did your finances slash business grow or change, especially with pregnancy? You know, there's a perception in the influencer space that if you have kids, and you get pregnant, man, you're, man, it's just going to, you're just going to have all these opportunities. They're just going to come out of the woodworks and it's just going to flow and, oh my God, you're going to make the most money and you're just going to have just this life of abundance. That's not the case. Mm, yeah. If you exploit it too. It, that's true. I was trying to be nice. So, so, so one of the things that we wanted to be mindful of is number one, there's a real devil out there. Mm -hmm. Number two, people are crazy. Mm -hmm. People are crazy. People are strange. People are weird. Number three, I'm not about to be plastering pictures of my son all over the internet or any other children that we have after this because we ain't out here just flaunting and flossing and whatever, whatever. But the more things that you put out there of yourself, the, the more, more you're responsible for it, the more you're responsible, the more your kids are able to be spotted and picked up. And, and, and there's just certain things that, you know, they didn't ask for this life. They didn't ask to be brought into the world. So I'm not going to put them out there to have additional scrutiny. You know what I'm saying? It's like, but, I wasn't asked to be, I, I didn't, I didn't ask to be here. I didn't ask to be a PK. I didn't ask to have the life that I have. Right. Right. It happened that way. And so there's some things that I just have to deal with because that's just the way it is for me. But also I want my son to be able to, decide like no i want i want to share this or i want to you know and that's just but then also when i when i was pregnant i didn't want i had already decided that i didn't want my business or my content to revolve around like or to to like because it's like when you are a lifestyle kind of influencer like when you like talk about everything and share everything like then your life becomes business and then like you have to like you don't get a break you know what i mean like you don't mm -hmm. like i have to i'm always constantly thinking about work even though i don't think about it as work i'm working all the time like my brain is always working and so like especially because we was working together more and like trying to build the business especially last year we were really working on building it but this year I took a maternity leave because I was like I need a break but last year we were really trying to build the business and like okay we need to make sure we're like making this amount of money and doing this and doing this and doing this like it's like we had to like really focus on not trying to change my platform too much to where it was like only about only about the baby, only about the, cause then I'm forced to like share my kid. Cause now all I talked about is being pregnant and talked about, you know what I mean? And I didn't want that to happen. Like I still want to be me. It's out. This has always been an outlet for me. Like it's always been like a creative outlet. I don't want to take that away from it and make the whole thing about my life. And I just, we can only talk about my life, you know? Um, so that was like one of the things that, and that's also one of the reasons why I ended up switching agencies as well because I felt like I needed, I wanted to be more in like the, I wanted to stick, stay true to the things that I really love and enjoyed And the, the agency that I'm with now is more fashion geared and like they, you know, so I was able to go to fashion week for the first time and all of that. So like, that was like the pivot that we made. Like we, we wanted to make sure that like everything we're doing is what we set out to do from the beginning. And we were not trying to change it into something that we can't sustain or keep up with or, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um, but also like it was a huge shift too, because I wasn't, I had already told you that I wanted to retire. Obviously I wasn't going to retire, but I knew we had a maternity leave coming up. And so we had to kind of like shift focus from just what I was doing to like, okay, Cam, like, what do you want to do? You know what I mean? Like, and that's when you were like, oh, I want to do more golf content. I want to do more. You know what I mean? So and now you're doing the things with your friends and stuff like that. And so we kind of, but I wanted that anyway, when we started the podcast a long time ago, we talked about that. Like, I was like, man, I want to just, I want Cam to be, I want him to be the guy. Like, I don't want to, I don't want to be, cause before I had like, I feel like it was more so like me doing influencing and you had your job and we were separate and we weren't doing it together. And then we came t together to do it. But I was like, 
I want you to make content too, though. Like I want you to be, I want you to have, because Cam got a lot of skills and he got a lot of, he got a lot of knowledge and stuff. And I'd be wanting him to like, be come on, to, talk to me. He, I'd be wanting you to like, come on. I, I see a, I see uh-huh. a following for you. Talk to me. You just be in your way. Talk to me. <laughs> you be in your way. You think people don't care. Or people don't want to hear what you have to say or, oh, this don't go together. Preaching and golfing. What does that have to do with each other? I don't know. Like you be the, in your space. head. Shout out to my guy, G Day, man. You be in your just head, bro. People want to know your life. Like, I, I feel like people need to get to know him more because they already know me. I talk about myself all the time. I'm tired of talking about myself. Let me chill. I just want to chill and be with my kid. Like Cam, I want him to be out there doing the cool influencer things. And because there's a whole space that hasn't been tapped into yet and but we're tapping he's tapping we're knocking on the it's door it's starting to happen the the older <laughs> white man golf trope is like it's it's a done no we're tap, not doing tap, that no more in. like the young guys are starting to golf now like y'all y'all gonna make it a fly sport you know what i'm saying and it's happening it's happening i just even but even like the skincare thing like you could do a skincare routine like I, we people want to see what you're talking about you made that one Tesla TikTok and it went crazy. <laughs> I'm gonna actually do another one. You know, not a tick, I'm gonna do a. Full, he has a lot of knowledge about full things. Full video. And so a while ago, I knew. Okay, one day I'm gonna get pregnant, and one day when I get pregnant, I cannot multitask. I know my brain. I'm not gonna care about nothing else but this baby. Ain't nobody got time for that. And I want to be able to like just do a little bit of influencing on the side, but just be a mom. You know what I'm saying? And I want Cam to like step into his greatness. You know. Because it's there, which is originally why you left your job, because you have all these great things that you can do. It's just you just, you know, you got to find your way. I'm still I'm still being you can go the distance deprogrammed. He's still being de- it takes. And that's another thing. I feel like that's what people are trying to ask, because people ask, like, how it was for you to, like, go from corporate to being an entrepreneur or whatever. And like as a topic to talk about. Yeah, um, we'll, we can dive deeper in another video. Yeah, but that's like a whole thing. Like deprogramming is a lot, especially because I, I pulled Lexus off kind of a corporate job too, almost. And she also, y'all think similar, like y'all need more structure and more. And I'm not, I'm, I'm very all over the place. So us yep. trying to all work together has been interesting. Yep. <laughs> well, we're, listen, we're persevering. We're doing great. Shout out to the team. It's, it's a, the whole th- Everything in life is a process. It really is. And it's just you, when you come in contact with a process that doesn't look like the processes that you've dealt with before, you still got to realize it's still a process. Everything's a process. And so that's, that's one of the things that Mm -hmm. I'm learning is either way, it's a process, right? Mm -hmm. Whether it's a process that you're familiar with, familiar with or not, it's a process. So I keep saying process, but that's a, that's a, and a lot of places, that's a cuss word. No, it is. Process. Uh, uh, stick, stick with the pro. In sports, stick with the process. It's a process. The process. You got you to gotta continue with the pro. Like, it's a process. Any type of growth, any type of development, it's a process. And so. Yeah. Um, I'm grateful for, you know, the people around me and, and my, especially my wife, uh, who's, you know, always encouraging me. I know I frustrate her to no end. Oh, my God, he does. But, you know, I'm, I'm being deprogrammed and reprogrammed. And, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm seeing some light at the end of the tunnel. And I'm, I'm God is surrounding me. And, and you're always one person away. You're literally always one person away from the connection that you need or building and developing a relationship that's going to grow into something greater. But you can't be afraid to step outside of the box mm-hmm. and, and do the things that you love. Right. And so. Yeah, my wife challenges me, you know, just create content like as much as you possibly can. And I'm doing it now. A lot of y'all don't care about my golf content. A lot of y'all, if we're being honest, a lot of y'all just y'all want to see me, Vicky and Xander. (laughs) And uh, the minute I post that it's boom. Now you're going to see all where all my following is. The engagement goes through the roof. Yeah. But the minute I post things that I love and enjoy, the engagement is low. But that's okay Because you have to grow. Guess what? I'm not moved by the likes in, in the comments, in the in the views. I really don't care. Your people got to find you. But my people got to find me, and my people are starting to find me. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's a process. So, hey, listen, you have anything else? We got, no. he got to get ready to go. Yeah. 
Um, um, life is good. Nope. That's uh, I'm excited to continue in the process. I'm excited to continue the journey. I'm excited to keep grinding. I'm excited to keep disciplining myself and commanding my body to submit <laughs> to to the mentality that I know. I command you to grow. <laughs> that that I'm trying to you know get it to submit to, uh, so that I can be. Like there's a quote I posted on my Instagram. It said a lot of times we always talk about I die for my family. And that's the especially in our community. Man, I die for my family. I die for mine. Yeah, but will you live for them? Will you be healthy for them? Will you strive to have uh uh a optimal health, mm-hmm. optimal living yep. so that your children's children can see you and, and you can still get down on the ground and play and do all right. the great like that's that's what I'm living for. And so, um, yeah. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you didn't notice, it's actually two episodes of Everything Is We, the podcast, but it's a shortened version of both of those episodes. They are both actually like an hour long. So if you guys want to watch the full episodes of the podcast, we talk about a lot more. We go into more detail. We give our scripture of the week. So be sure to check those out on our podcast, Everything Is We. You can check that out on YouTube and also on Spotify and any other streaming platform that you may use. And subscribe to us. Listen to us. Join our Patreon fam. We can do live streams exclusively for the everything is we fam okay we do after dark podcasts where we talk about whatever we want and we get real and raw and you know we go in okay so anyways if you guys want to check us out be sure to do so it'll be linked in the description box also in the cards of this video and yeah subscribe to this channel because i got more videos coming soon okay bye